Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining uh, ECU uh, chip tuning, how you can increase horsepower by simply uh, retuning your ECU. Now it used to be where you would actually physically replace a chip uh, in your car and that chip would have a different software loaded onto it uh, that would then uh, alter several things on your car and increase horsepower. Nowadays it's as simple as plugging into your OBD2 port, uh, installing new software, altering some characteristics about how your engine behaves, and then increasing horsepower. So basically you're going to have something just like this. This is actually just a diagnostic scanner, but it would look just the same. It'd have an OBD2, OBD2 port on the end of it, plug it into your car, uh, install the software, and you're good to go. So, some of the changes that an ECU chip tune or a reflash is going to do is it will, first of all, you could raise the rev limit. So, if your car uh, has a relatively uh, safe or uh, just a, a safe rev limit so that it's not going to, you know, get too high, uh, increase the damage, increase the chance of engine failure with uh, added friction, added heat. So, one thing it can do is raise the rev limit. And assuming that you can maintain your torque curve, then you can increase power by revving higher. Now, this is also useful if you have other engine upgrades. So if you upgrade your camshafts, if you upgrade your valves, your valve uh, springs so that you don't have any float, um, different things like this so that you can have good airflow at higher RPM, you're going to want to raise the rev limit. And so one thing an engine reflash will allow you to do is raise that. Now, of course, the reason being that you wouldn't want to do it is or why manufacturers don't do it right off the bat is the increased chance of engine failure from more friction and heat and also because they haven't installed different components. Now, another thing an ECU reflash can do is raise the govern top speed. So a lot of times manufacturers will have a govern top speed for a vehicle. Uh, for example, I believe BMW puts 155 miles per hour limit on a lot of their vehicles. You can remove this, thus go faster, um, at the risk of your own safety, and it's probably illegal to do in some areas, uh, not sure about that, but point is they're just following regulations and keeping safety in mind, and that's why they set these things, and so you can remove it if you're going to go to a track and, and you want to use the full potential of your vehicle. The third thing, and the important thing that I want to talk about in this video is the air to fuel ratio uh, tuning. So by altering the air to fuel ratio, you can alter how much power the engine creates. Now, uh, you may hear the terms lean, ideal, and rich when talking about air fuel mixtures. Lean being an air fuel mixture of 14, greater than 14.7 to 1 uh, units of air per units of fuel. So for example, 16 uh, parts air for one part fuel. So that means that you're going to have oxygen left over at the end of the cycle. Um, you're not you're not using all of the air that you inject. Now ideal is about 14.7 to 1. I've got a video on that if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I'll include a link in the description. And uh, a rich air fuel mixture is less than 14.7 to 1. So you're going to be injecting more fuel than you can burn in the cylinder. Uh, one of the good things about that is you can you can also uh, kind of keep the engine a little cooler and uh, when you're flooring it, it's, it's better to have a little bit richer um, for the catalytic converter. So, uh, I was reading in the Journal of the Society of Automotive Engineers, actually it was from some document in the 1920s, uh, it's incredible that that's still relevant, but the point is they were saying how maximum power uh, is achieved around an air fuel ratio of 12.5 to 1. Now of course it's going to vary from engine to engine. Um, it's not specifically dead on 12.5 to 1, but point is you're going to want a little richer air fuel mixture to create more power, a little more fuel injected. Now, maximum thermal efficiency, according to the Journal of Society of Automotive Engineers, uh, was achieved around an air fuel ratio of 6 to 1, so 16 to 1, so it's pretty lean. So uh, with that, you, you notice that manufacturers, when they're creating an engine, what do they want? Well, the biggest thing they probably want is to meet government regulations and, and fuel economy standards. So by uh, using a leaner air-fuel mixture, they're going to have uh, a more efficient engine, which is maybe not producing as much power, but it's going to meet uh, good fuel economy ratings. So that's why they're going to do it, and that's why you're going to take your... Uh, ECU reflash and retune it so that you can get that power uh, that you want to create. So that's the biggest thing here, uh, changing the air fuel ratio, getting a little more rich so you can produce more power. The final thing I'll go into 
is ignition timing, and that's a topic all in itself. So next week I'll have a video explaining how, with ignition timing, you can create more power.